So I just learned this week that according to the secular liturgical calendar, this past Monday is apparently known as Blue Monday because it's considered the most depressing day of the year. And this is apparently what the world wants us to fixate and commemorate on this occasion. But I can understand, to be fair, why people connect this week to depression, especially for those of us living in the Northern Hemisphere. And if you live in a place like I do, which is really far north, the days are really short and the nights are really, really cold. And the, the joy of the Christmas season has all worn off now. And perhaps most of all, because the optimism and the hope that this year would represent a new year and a new you has proven to be misplaced for a lot of us. So we're now three weeks into the new year, which means that for many of us, those new year's resolutions probably didn't work out. And so they'll get shelved for another year and until our memory fades and along with it, that cynicism that would have discouraged us from trying again until the new year arrives again and we're ready to try again. But if we're so prone to making resolutions or if we're so convinced that we can improve ourselves, then I think it's worth asking why this resolve is so often met with failure. Well, there are three reasons that I can think of for why this happens. They are that we don't have a logically consistent understanding of ourselves, we don't have the right tools, and we don't have a proper vision of the good. So let's start with the first one. We don't have a logically consistent understanding of who we are as human beings. Like, what is the answer to the question, what is a human being? Like, that seems obvious, but how you answer that question will dramatically affect how you conduct yourself as a human being and where you draw from to try to get advice and inspiration for how to try to live well. And unfortunately, the world we live in does not have a consistent answer to that question, which is pretty crazy considering how fundamental a question it is to live life. And this is true even among the experts that we might try to take advice from, which is why we end up inheriting this blended spectrum of popular notions full of inconsistencies. Everything from human beings are an inevitable consequence from the endless chaotic sequence of cause and effect to things like we are pure spirits trapped in crude and finite physical forms that we have to try to liberate ourselves from. And I've heard both uneducated and educated people hold to these kinds of axioms. I've heard educated people like medical doctors say things like, everything is pure, mystical, invisible energy that we have to conform to, to teenage YouTube atheist commenters who believe that everything is fatalistically determined through cause and effect. And how you answer this question matters a lot, because if you are someone who holds the material world in disdain in favor of like the supremacy of the spiritual, then you're probably going to look for a spiritual solution to every problem that you encounter, whether it is merely material or not. If you're someone who believes that we are nothing more than matter locked into an inevitable uh, sequence of cause and effect, then you might succumb to the conclusion that it doesn't matter what we do at all because we're gonna do it anyways, and then retreat from any potential responsibility you have to employ your will in the service of some good. As a theist, I'm with St. Thomas Aquinas, who inspired by Aristotle's teachings, taught that we have three powers or faculties of the soul. And by the soul, he wasn't talking about some invisible ghost in the human body, running the machine of the human body. He was talking about you, the entirety of you. A human person is a soul. A human person is a body and a soul together, a composite of those things, not one against or separate from the other. So any solution that we might offer according to that needs to appreciate both of those realities. So these three powers are our intellect, which is our ability to perceive and rationally interpret what is true. Our passions, which are our emotions and desires which draw us towards something. And then our will, which is our ability to exert some effort to realize a particular outcome that we desire. When it comes to our resolutions, like the kind that we make at New Year's, I think most of us go into that thinking of it as um, merely a question 
of will, like willpower, right? So we may have identified some good that we want to achieve, like maybe it's losing weight or quitting smoking or something like that. And then we decide we're just gonna muster up all the willpower it's going to take to achieve that end. And then a few weeks go by and it doesn't work out and we're left wondering why or surrendering to ideas like, well, it's not your fault, it can't be done. And I think that there is a principle that is trying to announce itself in these kinds of experiences if we allow ourselves to hear it. And it is that our choices are not independent from each other. They are part of an aggregate of all of our choices that combine to produce certain kinds of outcomes and experiences that we have in our lives. So I think it's naive for us to believe that we can make one large, grand gesture and choice like a resolution made in a fleeting moment of optimism that will overwhelm all the other factors of our lives and produce the effects that we want. I think a fitting analogy here is to understand our lives like a machine or a system, which raises the question, what is a system? Well, a system is the accumulation of component parts that when combined together in a logical sequence will produce an effect far more powerful than any of those individual component parts can produce on their own. And this is true for our lives as well. We plug together multiple choices and then layer them together on top of each other so that they accumulate in strength and become far more effective than any single choice is on its own. And this can produce incredibly powerful effects which can support the direction we wanna go in our lives, but then can also resist the direction we wanna go if we're stringing together choices that we didn't intend to combine and become more something more powerful than our will can resist. And that's how we end up with systems like addiction. Addiction is the accumulation of small, seemingly insignificant, maybe even innocent seeming choices that when, we're, when done over and over again, combine to produce an appetite that is far more powerful than our ability to resist. On the flip side of that, multiple decisions compounded towards some good end, or how we end up with something like a discipline or a virtue, something like healthy eating or fitness, so that any temptation to neglect your fitness or to eat something that you, you recognize as being unhealthy for you just won't be that attractive for you because the virtue is strong, the virtue that you've instilled is so much stronger than any potential appetite to temptation. So the second thing is that we don't have the right tools to accomplish these things. Again, we often think about this as being a matter of will. So in the case of resolutions, we've decided we are going to change ourselves into something that we are currently not. We're going to acquire some good attribute that we don't currently possess, and then we're going to give it to ourselves. And that this is going to be this is going to come about through an act of will. Now, do you notice the implied contradiction in that? Think about what you're saying. You're saying that you're going to give yourself something by your own will that you don't currently have. Isn't that kind of like saying, I'm gonna become wealthy by giving myself money? If we want to acquire something that we don't have, we need to look outside of ourselves to acquire it. And since what we're talking about is not material possessions, but these are more attributes and virtues, um, then we should be looking to a non-material source or something like this. And if like most people, you believe in God or a higher power who is behind everything and whose providence reigns over everything, then it makes a lot of sense to go there first. As a Catholic, the more time I spend trying to grow and acquire good habits and virtues and to expel vices, the more I am becoming utterly convinced that the best use of my will to achieve these ends is to first seek God's grace above all else. God is the source of being, life, truth, goodness, and happiness. So simply resolving to acquire or become those things when you're already lacking in them without first drawing from that source is futile. That's why when my alarm goes off early in the morning and I'm faced with the challenge of meeting my commitment to get up early and exercise when I don't want to, when my body is saying, oh, just sleep in, just hit the snooze button, Instead of fighting against myself and trying to impose my will against apparently my own will, I say a little prayer. I say, God, give me the strength. I draw from an outside source for that strength that I obviously don't have. 
Otherwise, I wouldn't be saying to myself, nah, I don't wanna get up. If you want to become a person who is better, more loving, more wise, more kind, more virtuous, then you need to do whatever you can to expose yourself to God who is love and wisdom and holiness. And those things will rub off on you. This is what Christians mean by the word grace. C.S. Lewis called it the good infection of God. So if you've resolved to become less attached to idleness and distractions, instead of going blue in the face trying to muster up the willpower that it will take to overcome your compulsive behavior, spend more time in prayer. If you've decided to eat healthier, read more scripture. If you've decided to try to overcome your addictions, go to daily mass. In other words, seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be added unto it. Lastly, the third thing is we've lost the vision of the good. G.K. Chesterton said something like, humanity fell twice, first in the Garden of Eden, and in that case, we acquired the knowledge of good and evil. And then at some other point, we fell again and we lost the knowledge of good. But we still have this knowledge of evil. We still recognize the things that we hate and we reject. And we see this constantly in the world today. At every turn, someone is protesting and denouncing and canceling something or someone that they perceive to be an evil in the world. But none of these same parties are simultaneously proposing a vision of what is good and true. We need to be able to recognize what is good and true in order to aim our lives towards that. And as a Christian, that vision of what is good is the life of Jesus. And so all I have to do is model my life after his and his teachings. As secularism and with it a practical agnosticism dominates our society, we will never be able to propose something as lofty as an answer to the question, what is good and true? For that, we need a firm vision of something or someone that is greater than ourselves. And that's why religion can be so liberating for the mind and for the soul and why it has such practical application in the case of something like making a resolution and trying to become better than what you are. Thank you so much for watching that, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing and hitting that bell if you're on YouTube or just liking and following from wherever you are and wherever you happen to be watching this from. And if you wanna support the making of these videos, then please consider supporting my work as a digital media and marketing expert. My company, Holdsworth Design, is a branding and communications company that specializes in web design and logo and branding, graphic design, uh, videography, and communications and marketing strategy. So if you know of a parish or a diocese or a business or a ministry that needs help in those areas, then please send them our way and I'm sure that we can probably help them out. And be sure to check out the website which is holdsworthdesign.com.